Welcome to the first class of the Embry Yoga series. Today we're going to talk about Ajna Chakra Energy. I always like to start any chakra series yoga classes starting with Ajna Chakra Energy. Um, and I, we have today, we have Ace, Aislin, mm -hmm. Ace here to practice with us. I'm so happy that you can be here with us today. Do you mind introducing yourself? Oh, yeah, my name is Ace Lynn, uh, Ace for short. Um, this is my second pregnancy, I'm having a girl this time. I am 35 weeks, um, so she's coming on soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I practice yoga pretty much daily um, to really just keep fit and uh, flexible. Um, peaceful <laughs> with the whole thing so um, and I'm really excited to be here as well thanks we're so happy that you're here me I'm so happy that you're here Ace has been on this journey with me for a couple of pregnancies now mm -hmm. so it's really nice to have you here so what we're gonna do today is really focus on the Ajna like I said chakra energy which is sometimes known as the brow chakra or the third eye center. And we're just gonna start by coming into a comfortable seated meditation position. You can close the eyes if that's comfortable for you. Um, one of the reasons I like to start with this energy center, especially during pregnancy, is because this is the most important when connecting to your intuitive nature, which we really need to be tapped into during pregnancy and during labor and during birth and during parenting. Um, in Sanskrit, Ajna means command center or Samin. And so somehow a long time ago, those ancient yogis knew that there was something going on in the middle of the brain that kind of ran the whole show for our whole lives. But specifically, um, as far as what we're talking about during pregnancy, super important to connect to that part of our brain. So um, it's the Ajna Chakra is the center that integrates and brings balance to the whole brain itself. Um, brings balance to the brain in um, relationship with the body functions and how the body responds um, to the thoughts and responds to the emotions. And it's also that part of our energy system that connects us to the divine universal wisdom. So it's the energy of wisdom, of intuition, of clarity, of inspiration, and clear thinking. So the most important thing to realize during pregnancy is that we already know how to gestate and give birth. We already know how to do this thing. And we don't really need to go to a class to learn how, but we have a tendency, especially in our culture, to look outside of ourselves for that wisdom, for that knowledge, for that learning of how to um, labor and give birth and, and parent our children. But what we really need to be doing is tapping into our own innate intuitive knowledge. So bring your awareness to what's called the third eye center or the Ajna chakra, which really is um, kind of in the center of the head. So imagine literally right the very center of your brain maybe coming from the middle of the brow straight back and it's really i like to refer to it as where the limbic system is and that's the part of our brain that literally uh, corresponds or kind of irregulates the the all the functioning of the brain and also helps regulate the cerebral cortex functioning with the hind brain functioning and just brings us to a place of balance so Bring your awareness to that part of the brain. This is the energy of meditation and mindfulness, actually. It's the energy of present moment awareness that helps to build the connections that allow us to think clearly, judge wisely, and use our intellectual functions appropriately when making decisions for ourselves and for our children. Closing the eyes. Let's bring our hands into Gyan Mudra. So the thumb and the index finger are lightly touching with the other three fingers outstretched. So in the yoga philosophy, this mudra is the mudra of meditation, the mudra of wisdom, of clear thinking. And it's basically symbolizing linking our individual unique consciousness, which is represented by the index finger, with the universal divine consciousness, which is represented by the thumb. So a gentle connection there, noticing the connection. 
And we're going to begin breathing in a way that we direct our breath in through the nostrils and out through the ears. So with the mouth closed, imagine breathing in through the ears now at your own pace and out through the nostrils. So you're just going to take this breath, visualizing the air moving in, kind of really energizing that Ajna Chakra area and then exhaling through the ears. And once again, in through the ears and exhaling through the nose. So breathe in this way a few times, cleaning out the center of your brain. Focus, concentration, And you might even just visualize a violet light in the center of your head as you do this. And as you breathe in and out this way, that light just begins to grow from the center of the head and just make space between the thoughts, between the thoughts and the reactions. Just spaciousness in the brain. Hmm. And then letting go of that breath, just pay attention now to the gentle undulation of the natural breath. The practice of yoga is the practice of coming into the present moment, of yoking together the mind, the body, and the breath, and the spirit all in one The easiest way to practice this present moment awareness is having attention on the breath. And then we're just going to bring our hands into what's called the mudra of the inner self. So as if you're holding a little baby bird in your cupped palms, you can bring that arrangement right in front of your forehead. So just notice that arrangement. Maybe you can take those thumbs away from the forehead just a little so you can look right at the thumbs. Relax the shoulders, creating a steady gaze, focusing on those thumbs or that space right above the thumbs, the space inside the hands, as if you're focusing your gentle gaze on the flame of a candle. You don't want it to blow out. Setting an intention here to just be present with ourselves during this practice. Inhale and exhale, take the hands to heart center. So our intention for this practice today is going to be to cultivate that Ajna Chakra energy. This energy of intuition and inner guidance. An intention to connect to divine universal wisdom. And maybe just repeating to yourself this affirmation, divine universal wisdom guides my path. I listen to and trust my inner guidance. So take a moment to say that to yourselves. Divine universal wisdom guides my path. I listen to and trust my inner guidance. Inhaling and exhaling. And let's just bring one hand to heart center and one hand to baby. Bring your baby into the awareness of this intention. Our babies have the same energy systems, the same energy centers that are also developing along with his or her physical body. So including your baby in this intention, allowing your baby's own connection to intuition and insight, guide your baby through the next few days, few weeks, <laughs> hopefully not months, right, of gestation in preparation to be born. So releasing that intention right from your heart center, from your Ajna Chakra, from that connection to the divine, right through that energy right into your baby. 
and let the hands come down to the sides. And let's just begin our practice by taking some nice big inhalations and exhale, hands to heart center. We're just going to do that two more times. Nice big breath in and exhale down. And just to set that intention even more, one more nice big breath in and exhale, hands down. We're just going to take a couple of gentle twists here, inhaling the arms up. Take a very gentle twist to the right. So as you hold this twist, make sure baby is facing forward and you're twisting from the thoracic spine and you're just inhaling gently, lifting the crown of the head, exhaling, maybe take a look over that right shoulder and then inhale back to center and exhale, let's gently twist to the other side, keeping that awareness of baby facing forward, just twisting through the upper spine, releasing any tension in the neck and the shoulders, lifting the crown, using the breath, maybe take that gaze over the left shoulder, and then inhale back to center, and exhale, hands to heart center. Good. Now we're just going to come to hands and knees. So when we come to hands and knees and we begin to set up for some cat-cow kind of stretches, remember when you are pregnant that when you come into a cow stretch, let's say, you're trying to lift the sit bones, but you're not just dumping into the low back. So you want to let the sternum shine forward, maybe lift the chin a tiny bit, keep baby nice and gently tucked in. So more of a neutral spine here. Inhale, and as you exhale, go ahead and arch the back up, tucking the chin, and just make this feel really juicy in your spine and good and spacious. So go ahead and go back and forth with your own breath. And as you inhale and exhale here, imagine you have a giant flashlight shining out of your forehead in the front and out of the back of your head in the back. So you're just moving that flashlight back and forth as if you could just sweep the whole room front and back. You can shine it on your baby and then you can shine it up towards the sky. So maybe a few more breaths here, really moving from that third eye center exhaling good job maybe one more time at your own slow breath pace inhale and exhale good and then just come to your neutral spine maybe wiggle around through the hips maybe bend the elbows a little bit wagging the tail a little bit just kind of loosening up the joints and then from here we're going to come to what's called spinal balance or just really focusing and grounding on our connection to the earth and maybe engaging a little bit more of the muscles of the body so you're going to take that right foot back tuck the toe and first just stretch the back of the leg so maybe lean back and get a nice stretch in the calf maybe roll forward on the ball of the foot getting a stretch in the ball of the foot and just have a nice stretch here. From here, you're going to really focus on that connection of the, that flashlight shining straight down at the earth. And you're going to lift that left arm forward. So as if you're shaking somebody's hand, so feeling nice and strong, maybe a gentle bend in that right elbow so you're not locking the elbow. Nice and firm here. If you wish, you could lift that back leg. You do not have to lift the back leg, but just really maintaining that focus of stability through the whole entire body. Take a nice big inhalation and then exhale. Go ahead and take that hand down, take the knee back underneath the hip and wag the tail. So super simple. We're just beginning to waken up the spine, waken up the muscle attachments really using our concentration and our focus, which is Ajna Chakra energy, to make sure that we're doing things in a way that makes our body feel good. So go ahead now and take the left leg back, 
And once again, just let your body move here in a way that feels comfortable. So you can tuck the toe and just stretch through the back of the leg, moving back and forth, really feeling the bottoms of the feet. <sighs> Inhale and exhale, come to stillness. Really hug baby into midline so you have a nice, solid, stable structure through the body here. Maybe really notice that your hands are spread wide apart, nice wide base of support. And then go ahead and take that left hand forward. If it feels good to you, you can lift that right leg, really keeping baby pulled into midline and perhaps directing the hips to be as level as possible. Inhale and exhale, hand comes down, knee comes down, wag the tail a little. And then you're just going to move into some barrel rolls here. So with the tail wagging, then you can begin to involve the chest. So just really moving the whole entire torso in circles in any way that feels good to you. So you're just listening to your own inner guidance. What is your body brain center asking you to do? moving in a way that feels comfortable and intuitive to you, which, by the way, might come handy during labor. <laughs> really important to let your body take control when you're in labor. And then just take the knees a little bit wider, and we're going to come into child's pose. So depending on how much child you have, <laughs> you might need a little bit of help to bring the earth closer to you because we want to make a connection of our forehead to the earth. Really notice that you can release and relax here. So just breathe into this child's pose in a way that feels totally comfortable and releasing. You can sometimes use a bolster here instead of a block to just really lean into it. But I want you to just begin to breathe in through the forehead and out through the forehead. So now you're just imagining that the energy of the earth you're connected to is refreshing your mind and refreshing your brain and you're able to exhale all of the tension out through that third eye center. So remember the wisdom of the earth is also the wisdom that you have within your own being on how to give birth. Maybe just repeating this affirmation to yourself, the wisdom of the earth guides my path. I listen to and trust the wisdom of the earth and the wisdom of countless generations of beings that have given birth before me. So you don't have to learn this for yourself. It's already been handed down to you through generations and generations and generations of women giving birth before you. So take a nice big inhale in through that third eye center. Exhale all your tension, all your worry, all your stress, anxiety back into the earth. And then gently come back up to hands and knees. And we'll just move that block out of the way. And we're just going to get ready to come into either downward facing dog or anahatasana. So this is another thing that can be a little bit challenging when you have uh, a lot of baby in there. <laughs> so make it comfortable in your body. So you can either tuck your toes and come into downward facing dog, or you can just reach hands forward and come into puppy pose, whatever feels good to you. It's just a way to begin to wake up the muscles of the legs, getting us ready to move to standing. So walk your dog, stretch your legs, make it feel nice and good and juicy and intuitive. And then from here to come to standing, you're just going to bend your knees, walk your hands back, take the forearms to the legs, feel the grounding here, release the shoulders and gently stand up. Super simple. Inhale, the arms come up and exhale. Hands to heart center, huh? <laughs> She's like, uh oh, are we getting ready? Maybe we'll have a baby here today. <laughs> She's like, ah, feels good. Good. So you might bring in your baby into your awareness here, right? Yeah. No, she just started moving a lot. Awesome. 
She's like, yes, the earth is telling me what to do. Okay, don't move too much, baby. Just calm down a little bit. <laughs> but you're just going to walk your feet together gently. So they're hip distance apart. Perfect. And then just make your way gently to the top of the mat in Tadasana. And you might need to use a chair sometimes when we go into our next pose, which is going to be pyramid pose. So go ahead and get a chair and we'll have this handy if you need it. So we're going to show Aislinn using a chair as a prop on this side and just using some blocks as a prop on the other side to give you those different options. But definitely really wanting to make sure that you're following your own body signals. This whole class is about listening to your body, especially the Ajna Chakra class is really about following your own body signals when it comes to how you're moving. Um, so basically, let's just start by taking a couple of nice deep breaths. Once again, inhaling, imagining that violet light just coming right down in through the brain, infusing the whole body with that intuitive knowledge, wisdom, clarity, inspiration, clear thinking, connection to that universal divine wisdom, consciousness. One more time, inhaling and exhaling. And then you're just gonna take your hands forward onto the chair, or if you don't have a chair, you're just gonna have your hands at your hips and you're gonna step the left leg back about three feet, not too far back. Have a nice wide base of support from right to left and you're just going to imagine those hip pointers facing forward and just take a nice little forward fold into this pyramid pose. So you can either have your chair or perhaps a block here you can be using. Inhale and exhale gently. So from here, you're just letting your body move in a way that feels good. You can bend that right knee a little bit if you need to. You can work towards leveling the hips, but that is totally secondary. It's more about inviting the sit bone on the right side to just release and relax and move towards the back of the room. So it's a gentle invitation. There's nothing that says the hips have to be level. <laughs> Take a nice big inhalation and exhalation. <sighs> Release and relax, let the back of the legs stretch. And then gently come up from there in a way that makes sense to you. Super gentle. Go ahead and take the hands to the hips one more time. And now we're just gonna make a little adjustment opening to the front of the room here. And we're gonna set up for triangle pose. So you'll see you may not have to move your feet very much, depending on how long your legs are. Ace has nice long legs. <laughs> I have to take my stance a little bit shorter for triangle pose, but the right foot is facing the top of the mat. The left foot is parallel with the outside edge of the left side of the mat, or maybe the toes are a little bit turned in. Just depends on your hips, your body. So you're just gonna take a nice big inhalation here. Reach that right palm forward. Perfect, palm up. And I actually like to then, once I have that lift through the sternum, take hands to hips and just bust up that right hip under, that left hip up and fold over that right leg into triangle pose. So once again, you can use a chair here, highly recommended if you are um, if you have a nice large baby in there, <laughs> if you have a little bit more space, you may be able to use a block here, but it's all about opening the chest and the heart center up towards the ceiling. May love and light descend upon me as the affirmation for triangle pose. You can take the arm up, you can keep it at the hip, you can take your gaze down, whatever feels good to you, but just feeling this shape in your body, inhaling fully and exhaling completely to rise up from here, take a slight bend in that right knee, gently come up, and we're just gonna pivot our feet so that we are in star pose. So first we're gonna just have the feet 
parallel, take a nice big inhalation, arms stretch up. And as we exhale, hands come to hips, folding forward. We're gonna come to a forward fold. So another place for a block, <laughs> depending on that flexibility and how your body wants to move. When you're in this forward fold, you can let your head really relax, let your shoulders release, make that connection of Ajna Chakra energy. That's the energy of intuition, of intuitive knowing. Make that connection to your body. So what does your body want to do here? Inhale and exhale fully and deeply. And then when we come up from this position, we're gonna start by bringing the heels in slightly. Toes come out, bend the knees, take the hands to the thighs, and we're in goddess. So in goddess, we're gonna take our hands to lotus mudra. Hold this mudra, and if you ever get tired of the knees being bent, just straighten the legs. <laughs> So we're holding lotus mudra, visualizing a violet golden light in the palms. Inhale and exhale. As you breathe in and out, that violet light infuses the arms and the elbows and the hands, the shoulders, the whole entire body. Inhale and exhale. Release the mudra. Take the hands to the hips, straighten the legs, and then just take that right foot in. The left foot faces the side of the mat. Left hand comes out, palm up, and we're gonna come into triangle pose on this side. So when you hinge over that leg, you may not make it very far, and that's fine. You might need a block, you might need a chair, you might need two blocks. You want to try with two blocks? Are you good? Good. <laughs> so as you can see, Aislinn naturally wants to have her hand at her hip. That might be what feels good to you. You might play around with extending the hand overhead. You might play around with the gaze looking up. Maybe it feels better to look it down. Totally up to you how you feel strong and stable in this position. Go ahead and lift up, inhaling gently, exhale, hands to hips. And then we're just going to step and pivot around to pyramid on this side. So pyramid legs, make sure they're nice wide apart from, front, from right to left. And you might be able to use these blocks for pyramid, maybe not, let's give it a try. So generally speaking, trying to level the hips as much as possible, but not necessary. And you're just taking your gaze and your focus into your body. So really noticing the shape of your body. What does this left hamstring want? Release, relax, let the left sit bone lift, let the right hip lower, Inhale and exhale. With the next inhalation, gently come up from there, taking hands to hips. Just pop up on that left toe and step forward. Hands to heart center. Hmm. So bring your awareness once again to that center of intuition the Ajna Chakra. And we're actually going to bring our hands to Hakini Mudra. So Hakini Mudra is the mudra of concentration. We're gonna go ahead and come into tree pose here. So in tree pose, especially when you're pregnant, you really want to make sure that you feel solid and stable and grounded. <clears throat> You might need a chair for tree pose. So just lifting one leg or the other into tree pose, focusing on the, on the roots of that foot. And when you're coming into any kind of balanced pose, it's really the energy of concentration. 
and let your body wiggle around. Do what it needs to do in tree pose. Some people tree pose, their leg might be able to come up here. That is not the point, right? <laughs> Inhale, exhale, release that. Release the foot down. And then we're just gonna take the right leg back into crescent pose. Inhale, the hands are gonna to come to Lotus Mudra with the right leg back into crescent pose. So just a little bit more concentration here. Maybe Hakini Mudra feels better to you, but just have that focus on whatever mudra you have. Hakini Mudra, Lotus Mudra. Inhale and exhale, releasing. And then you're just gonna pivot all the way open to warrior two. So in warrior two, that left knee is bent. You're really grounding through the outside edge of the right foot. Just nice, big spaciousness in the body. <sighs> Inhale and exhale, keeping that concentration, that gaze, that focus across those left fingers. Hmm. Just flip that left palm up, maybe lean forward slightly, and we're going to come into Peaceful Warrior. So lift that left palm up towards the ceiling. The right hand can come down towards the right foot. It can stay at the hip. You're just opening the left side of the rib cage up towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, Warrior Two. Release the shoulders, relax the gaze. Inhale, and with the next exhalation, we're gonna come into side angle. So left forearm can find the left inner thigh, right hand can lift up overhead. So Ace feels really comfortable with this arrangement in her arms. Remember, you can always have hand to hip, or maybe hand just straight up overhead. Inhale, and as you exhale, come back through warrior two. Bending that left knee. And then we're just going to take a nice big inhalation. Pivot the feet forward again. Nice big stretch, star pose. And exhale, bend the knees gently and come into your forward fold one more time. Release, relax, take your blocks. <laughs> so in forward fold, super important that you just really let all the tension drain out of the upper body, through the head, the shoulders, release, maybe give a little wiggle. Maybe the knees need to be a little bit bent here. But let your body just sway from side to side if that feels good to you, bending the knees, whatever you need to do. And then gently you're gonna bend the knees bring the heels in, come up through goddess pose, back to our lotus mudra. And this time we're gonna take a little breath flow with our lotus mudra. So we're gonna inhale the arms up, exhale, hands come to heart center. Good, bend to your goddess pose. Let's do that again. So keeping that lotus mudra, inhaling up, perfect. And exhale, bring it back down. And let's just do that three more times with the breath. Inhale that Lotus Mudra up. Exhale, go ahead and bring it back down. And one more time, inhaling and exhaling. Hold it at heart center. And then go ahead and inhale, exhale, pivot to warrior two on this side. Taking the gaze over the right fingertips. Breathing here. You're gently just going to flip that right palm up and go ahead and take it into Peaceful Warrior. Breathe here, opening the right side of the rib cage towards the ceiling. Inhale and exhale back through Warrior Two. Release, relax. And then let's take that to side angle on the right side. So let the right forearm find the right 
thigh and just reach that left arm up however it feels good in your body take a nice big inhalation here and then as you exhale come back into warrior two breathe deeply exhale completely and then hands to hips maybe wiggling the feet around a little bit you're going to just pivot to crescent pose on this side so the left heel is lifted you're feeling nice and stable inhale the arms up exhale hands to lotus mudra hold baby in gently to midline maybe let the pelvis be heavy in the tailbone just move down towards the earth focusing concentrating and then hands to hips maybe kind of pop up a little bit and then just step forward to tadasana and then of course we need to have our tree pose on this side so whichever side you need to take tree pose on you're going to go ahead and take tree pose here you might have a wall or a friend you can lean on if you need to for stability good job really focusing concentrating on that connection of that foot to the earth letting this be still and smooth inhale and exhale release that foot down hands to heart center take a nice big deep breath I like how it's different on each side yes you can tell just how different mm -hmm. especially however maybe your baby's laying in there too <laughs> tree pose on one side feels totally different from tree pose on the other side now we're going to come down to malasana so take your feet nice and wide and use your block if you need it in fact i want we're going to use our block for malasana right now so find your block where you want it i'll give it to you because that's the best way to put it down where you need it <laughs> feet nice and wide and we're just going to wiggle our way down into a nice deep squat so once again you take your block you put it where you need it and you just come to rest on this block once again we're going to take that intention of connection to the earth connection to our baby allowing that grounding sensation grounding to the energy of the wisdom of the earth and all the beings that have given birth before us inhaling and exhaling here and then go ahead and release that and you're going to find your way to a seated position so you can just lean back and get off your block or you can lean forward and we're just going to do a little bit of stretches here and we're going to start in butterfly pose or cobbler's pose now if you have any problems with pain um, in the pubic area you're not going to want to take this pose you might want to take one leg out and then the other leg but if you're okay with baddha konasana you can go ahead and sit in baddha konasana you might need a bolster are you okay without a bolster for now okay we'll use that later for when we do our meditation but here in baddha konasana you're just just letting the groins open you can take hands to the ankles or to the feet if you're really flexible like Aislinn is <laughs> you might be able to just take it forward a little bit maybe not for me I just like to have my hands back here releasing and relaxing the chest the sternum lifting and then allow my knees to fall out from here inhale and exhale and then gently come up from that and we're just going to take the left foot into the inner thigh of the right leg extending the right leg out so this might be more comfortable for some of you but just pay attention to that right foot for a moment notice that it's there hello right foot <laughs> maybe wiggle the toes 
And then you're just going to take a very gentle forward fold over the center of the legs. Inhale and exhale. Just allowing the wisdom of the body to take over the breath the wisdom of the body to allow complete and total relaxation in that right inner thigh. Inhale and exhale one more time here. And then gently come up from here and you're just going to switch legs. Super simple. So here, once again, just like tree pose, might feel totally different on one side, right? <laughs> So find the arrangement in your body that's comfortable for you. Your body's telling you what it wants here. Follow your body's signals and then gently just take a little forward fold. Your body knows what to do. Inhale and exhale. And the more you practice following your body's signals during pregnancy, the more you practice this attention to the present moment awareness, the easier it's going to be for you to follow your body signals during labor. So this practice is not just about creating flexibility in your body. It's about creating flexibility in your mind and creating connection to your body and to your baby. So your baby also has an innate knowing that is telling him or her how to maneuver through your pelvis, just like your body is telling you how to move to allow your pelvis to open for baby to come through. So practice this when you're practicing yoga, when you're walking, <laughs> when you're sitting, right? Go ahead and gently come up from there. And then we're just gonna come into a seated meditation position. So you can sit up on your bolster if you want to. I'm gonna sit up on my block in Virasana. So just find yourself a comfortable seat. And for this meditation, we are going to bring our hands once again into Gyan Mudra, if that's comfortable for you. So that's just palms up or finger and thumb lightly touching. Remember that this Ajna chakra energy is basically the energy that is generated by the practice of mindfulness. Literally, the practice of mindfulness changes the neurons, changes the architecture of the brain. And it changes in a way that brings peace to your body, to your mind. It literally strengthens the connections that are associated and responsible for feelings of peace and joy and equanimity. It's this practice of stopping and noticing. So here, just begin to notice your thoughts, your feelings, your body sensations, without changing anything, without judging. This practice wires the nervous system towards emotional regulation and resiliency. It really wires your brain to be able to choose your responses to all of life's challenges, including any challenges that might be brought up during labor and birth, instead of just unconsciously reacting. In other words, equanimity. When you develop this quality in your own being, the benefits are also going straight to your baby's developing nervous system through that neurohormonal connection, literally through the bloodstream and from the power of intention. So just allow your mind quiet. Take a few breaths, connecting your heart energy to your baby's developing being feeling the belly and the chest rise with each inhale, feeling the gentle release with each exhale, breathing in, gently expanding, and breathing out, gently releasing. At your own breath pace, not any effort, just noticing.
breathing in. I know that I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know that I am breathing out. In and out. Breathing in, my body is calm. Breathing out, I release all tension. Breathing in, calming. Breathing out, releasing tension. Breathing in, I notice the energy of peace and equanimity in my being. Breathing out, I send the energy of peace and equanimity to my baby. So for the next few breaths, really notice peace in your body and send peace to your baby. Breathing in peace, Breathing out peace. And for the next few breaths, connect to the consciousness of your baby, however that makes sense to you, knowing that not only are you growing a physical being in your body, but that being also has a soul, a spirit, Whatever you consider that spark of consciousness, ask your baby, how can I create an environment of peace and stability to help you grow the type of brain that is associated with peace and joy and love and wisdom? To help you to be able to tap into your own intuitive nature for optimal ease during labor and birth. Ask your baby, what she needs from you to help her create strong brain connections that will help promote peace and joy and equanimity throughout her whole life here on earth. Keep being your baby in your awareness, your baby's consciousness in your awareness, visualizing that violet light in the middle of your brain, spreading that throughout your whole body with each breath, Imagine that same light spreading from your baby's brain throughout her whole body, bathing each and every cell in your body and your baby's body with its own connection to wisdom and intuition. Imagine each cell of your body, each thought in your brain, each synapse and neuron connection in your body and your brain and in your baby's body and brain infused with the energy of intention, of clarity, of peace, and understanding. Nice, even breathing. Rest the attention easily in the forehead in the eye that is made of light and cherish the delicate energies shimmering there. The small self enters delicious omnipresence. This it remembers and knows as its truth. The journey begins here with whatever is capturing your attention. Whatever your focus, Give your whole being, gradually, step by step, the infinity from which you both have emerged will encompass you with blessing. So deepening the breath, nice big inhalation. And exhale, once again, bring the hands to heart center. Thank you for practicing yoga with us today for the first class of the Embryoga series, focusing on the Ajna Chakra. May this 
practice of yoga, of mindful awareness of the present moment, of our connection with our babies, help to really recognize those seeds of peace within ourselves, within the whole world. May you water these seeds of peace with careful attention, love, and awareness. Namaste.